For nearly 30 centuries, ancient Egypt stood as one of the most illustrious civilizations in the Mediterranean world. Spanning from its inception around 3100 BC to its conquest by Alexander the Great in 332 BC. From the Great Pyramids of the Old Kingdom to the military conquests of the New Kingdom, Egypt's grandeur has fascinated archaeologists and historians for centuries. So much so, it gave rise to its own field of study, Egyptology. A lot of what we know today about the ancient Egyptians is gathered from the wealth of monuments, objects and artifacts left behind, adorned with hieroglyphs that until recently remained undeciphered. These discoveries have unveiled a captivating portrait of a culture unparalleled in the sheer beauty of its art, the architectural achievements it left behind, and the depth of its scientific understanding. Neolithic communities in northeastern Africa transitioned from hunting to agriculture, marking the shift from the late Stone Age. These early advancements laid the foundation for the subsequent development of Egyptian arts, crafts, technology, politics and religion, which included a great reverence for the dead and the potential belief in an afterlife. Apart from the expansive delta region where the Nile River branches out into the sea, most settlements in the Nile Valley were concentrated within a few miles of the river itself. The Nile River experienced annual flooding. It was so regular that it became an integral part of life for ancient Egyptian society. They even based their seasons off of the flooding cycle. Inundation, growth and harvest. The annual flooding was the lifeblood of their agriculture because it replenished the soil with a fresh layer of nutrient-rich sediment. In years when the Nile failed to flood, the soil was seriously affected, leading to heightened risks of food shortages. The availability of food resources also had a political aspect, and periods of drought likely played a role in the fragmentation of Egyptian political unity at the ends of both the Old and Middle Kingdoms. The Archaic period is one of the earliest phases of ancient Egyptian civilization. It lasted from around 3100 BC to 2686 BC, marking the transition from the prehistoric cultures of Egypt to a more centralized and organized state. King Menes founded the capital of ancient Egypt in the north, near the apex of the Nile River Delta. The city had various names throughout its history. Its ancient Egyptian name translated to White Walls, but it later became known as Memphis. The new capital would grow into a great metropolis that dominated Egyptian society during the Old Kingdom. The Archaic period also saw the development of the foundations of Egyptian society, including the all-important ideology of kingship. To the ancient Egyptians, the king was a godlike being, closely identified with the all-powerful god Horus. The earliest known hieroglyphic writing also dates back to this period. In the Archaic period, the majority of the population were farmers living in small villages, and agriculture, largely wheat and barley, formed the economic base of the Egyptian state. This period also saw the rise of individuals who were wealthy and powerful. These elites began building larger tombs for themselves, which were precursors to the pyramids. These tombs represented a growing divide between the elite and common people in Egyptian society. Only the wealthy and important could afford and be considered as deserving of such elaborate burials. During the Old Kingdom period, Egypt was largely unified as a single state. 
It became more complex and expanded militarily. Old Kingdom rulers built the first pyramids, which were both tombs and monuments for the kings who built them. Around 2630 BC, the third dynasty's King Djoser asked Imhotep, an architect, priest, and healer, to design a funerary monument for him. The result was the world's first major stone building, the Steppe Pyramid at Saqqara, near Memphis. Egyptian pyramid building reached its zenith with the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza on the outskirts of modern-day Cairo. Built for Khufu, who ruled from 2589 to 2566 BC, the pyramid was later named by classical historians as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus estimated that it took 100,000 men and 20 years to build it. Two other pyramids were built at Giza for Khufu's successors, Khafra and Menkaura. The laborers of the pyramids consisted not of enslaved individuals, but rather of peasants who undertook this work during the agricultural off-season. These peasants collaborated with specialized professionals, such as stonemasons, mathematicians, and priests. In a system resembling taxation, each household had the obligation to deliver a laborer for these projects, although those of wealthy backgrounds had the option to hire a replacement. At the same time, Egyptians embarked on shipbuilding, crafting vessels using interlocked wooden planks lashed together with rope and filled with reeds. These ships facilitated the trade of valuable commodities like ebony, incense, gold, copper, and Lebanese cedar, crucial particularly for construction projects. During the 3rd and 4th dynasties, Egypt experienced a flourishing era marked by a time of unprecedented peace and wealth. The pharaohs wielded unchallenged authority, establishing a robust central government. The kingdom faced no significant external threats and victorious military campaigns in the regions, such as Nubia and Libya, bolstered its substantial economic prosperity. However, throughout the 5th and 6th dynasties, the monarch's riches steadily diminished, partly due to the exorbitant costs associated with pyramid construction. Additionally, the absolute power of the pharaoh began to wane in the face of the growing influence of both the nobility and the priesthood, which developed around the worship of the sun god, Ra. Following the lengthy 94-year reign of King Pepi II from the 6th dynasty, the Old Kingdom era came to a tumultuous end. The Middle Kingdom of Ancient Egypt, spanning from around 2055 BC to 1650 BC, marked a pivotal era in Egyptian history. It commenced with the reunification of Egypt after the turbulent First Intermediate Period, as Mentuhotep II of Thebes successfully brought the country back under a single rule. The Middle Kingdom was characterized by flourishing art, literature, and architecture, with pharaohs undertaking ambitious infrastructure projects, including irrigation systems and fortifications. They emphasized their role as protectors and benefactors of the people. Egyptian rulers frequently maintained well-trained standing armies. The state's capacity to establish and sustain such a military force, along with the construction of fortifications, demonstrated its regained control over significant resources. However, the Middle Kingdom's period of prosperity was cut short after an invasion by a foreign people known as the Hyksos. The Hyksos emerged around 1650 BC. They were a Semitic people, indicating their Middle Eastern origin and non-native status in Egypt. The Hyksos not only imposed their own political leadership, but also introduced a range of cultural and technological innovations. 
These innovations encompassed bronze metallurgy, advanced pottery techniques, the introduction of horses and chariots, as well as the sickle sword and composite bow. The Hyksos did not control all of Egypt, but they coexisted with the 16th and 17th dynasties, which were based in Thebes. War between the Hyksos and the pharaohs of the 17th dynasty eventually culminated in the defeat of the Hyksos by Ahmos I, who founded the 18th dynasty of Egypt. In the following centuries, the Egyptians would portray the Hyksos as bloodthirsty and oppressive foreign rulers. Approximately in 1550 BC, Egypt entered the New Kingdom era, following the expulsion of the Hyksos from the region and the subsequent re-establishment of centralized political authority. This era represented the pinnacle of Egypt's influence and marked its most prosperous phase. During this remarkable period, Hatshepsut, widely renowned as Egypt's most celebrated female ruler, played a pivotal role. She initiated extensive trade networks that contributed to the wealth of Egypt, commissioning numerous construction projects and notably an impressive mortuary temple at Dair el Bahri. Furthermore, she directed the restoration of temples that had fallen into disrepair or suffered damage during the Hyksos rule. During this period, the term pharaoh, originally denoting the king's palace, transformed into a direct address for the king. In matters of religion, the pharaohs aligned themselves with the god Amun-Ra while continuing to acknowledge other deities. Around the mid-1300s BC, an unconventional departure from this tradition unfolded when one pharaoh opted to exclusively worship the god Aten, even changing his name to Akhenaten in homage to this deity. Some scholars perceive this as an early instance of monotheism, wherein the belief in a single god took precedence. Nevertheless, this shift did not persist beyond Akhenaten's rule. During the New Kingdom, Egypt attained the zenith of its power under the leadership of pharaohs Seti I and Ramses II. They embarked on campaigns to expand Egypt's influence, engaging in conflicts with the Libyans to the west and the Hittites to the north. The city of Kadesh, situated on the border between these two empires, emerged as a focal point of contention between the Egyptians and the Hittites, resulting in multiple confrontations there. Eventually, they reached an accord in the world's earliest known peace treaty. The disintegration of Egypt resulted from a combination of factors, including the burdensome costs of warfare, worsening droughts, widespread famine, civil unrest, and pervasive corruption. As a consequence, Egypt fractured into a multitude of city-states, each independently governed. Capitalizing on this political fragmentation, a military contingent hailing from the Nubian kingdom of Kush in the south achieved dominance by conquering and unifying Lower Egypt, Upper Egypt, and Kush. Eventually, the Kushites were expelled from Egypt in 670 BC by the Assyrians, who then established a client state, a political entity with self-governance but obliged to pay tribute to the more powerful state. In 656 BC, Egypt experienced reunification and successfully fought back from Assyrian control entering a phase marked by tranquility and prosperity. But this period came to an abrupt end in 525 BC, when the Persian king Cambyses vanquished the Egyptian rulers and took on the title pharaoh concurrently with his own role as the king of Persia.